Well, welcome back, chemistry students. In this very short lesson that we're going to see right now, you're going to learn how easy it is to calculate something called percent composition. Now, percent composition is based upon the concept that we learned about the law of definite composition, or sometimes called constant composition, or sometimes called definite proportions. And it says basically that the composition of a compound is always the same. And the composition of a compound is going to be stated as the percent by mass of each element in the compound. Now we're going to take a moment and look at a cute little video here of the way to find the percent of an element in a compound. And then you're going to duplicate this when you get ready to practice it for yourself. So be sure that you have a um, calculator handy and you're going to need access to your notebook because there's a worksheet in there we're going to have you work on. Here we go. In this demonstration, we're going to calculate the amount of a component in a commercially available product. Here we have some bubble gum, and the first item on the list of ingredients is sugar, indicating that that's the component that is present in the larger amount. How much is present? In order to determine that, we're going to take five unwrapped pieces of the bubble gum and mass it in the cup that we have here on the balance. We recorded the mass of our cup. Now we can record the mass of our cup and chewing gum. And now we'll chew it for about five minutes to remove all of the sugar. Our five volunteers have completed chewing the gum for five minutes and we've collected the gum in the paper cup. Now we mass it. Now we're able to take the data of our mass of the gum before the reaction and after chewing and compute the percent of sugar. To go through the calculations of this demonstration, we find that we began with 41.83 grams of the chewing gum in the cup. Subtracting the mass of the cup, we began with 40 grams of the dry gum. We then chewed the gum for five minutes, and after chewing, we massed it and the cup. Subtracting the mass of the cup, we had 12.62 grams of the gum without the sugar. Subtracting the mass of the gum without the sugar from the gum with the sugar, we found that we had 27.39 grams of sugar in the five pieces of chewing gum. Placing that mass of 27.39 grams of sugar over the mass of the gum before we started, 40.01 grams, we can calculate the percent of 68.45% sugar in the chewing gum. Okay, so I just have two questions on that, and that's just me. How come he had to put on surgical gloves to handle bubble gum? And the second question I have is, where is the footage of the helpful volunteers that are chewing the gum? That's just me. So as you can see, the percent by mass of an element in a compound is found by taking the mass in grams of that element that you're being asked about and divide it by the total molar mass of the compound. So let's remember, when you go get the total molar mass of a compound, you have to go to the periodic table, you count up the number of moles of each element, that is in the compound based upon its subscript in the formula, and then you multiply it by the molar mass which is shown on the periodic table. You'll sum all of those, and that's how you attain the molar mass of the compound that you can see on the denominator. Let's look at another example that also ties this to that law of definite composition. So two iron oxide samples are being um, analyzed. You'll learn soon that there are a number of ways that you can write different forms using the same element of a compound that differ very slightly. So the first one was analyzed and we had a mass of 36 grams total. 28 grams were due to iron and 8 grams due to oxygen. The same thing happened with the other percent composition calculation for the other iron oxide. 160 grams total, 112 of that was iron and 48 grams of that was oxygen. And the question is, are they the same compound? The only way they can be the same compound is if they have the same percent composition. So here are the calculations for the first compound made of iron and oxygen. It's the part divided by the whole. 
So we've taken the grams of iron divided by the total grams. You change it into a percentage by multiplying it by 100, or use the shortcut, just move the decimal point over two places. So we have 78% iron and 22% oxygen. We repeat the same calculations with the second compound. It, notice that the numbers are different, and that's okay, but at the end, if they are the same compound, they should have the same percent composition. And you can see that clearly they do not, since the second compound has 70% iron and 30% oxygen. So they are not the same compound. Notice, though, when you do the math for any kind of uh, calculation, the percentages of each of the elements in that compound should always add up to 100%. Okay, now this is a classic example of the questions that you're going to be asked to do next. And we'll say, what is the percent composition of sodium carbonate? The symbol for sodium is Na. And you'll also learn that CO3 is an ion called the carbonate ion. So now that we know how to count atoms in a formula, we have to obtain the molar mass. You will take two moles of sodium mass off the periodic table and you'll get a mass of a mole of carbon atoms and a mass of three moles of oxygen. You'll do that simply by multiplying them by their what looks like an atomic mass, but it's also the mass of one mole of those atoms in grams. It's always the part divided by the whole. So we took 2 times 23. That's been rounded off. If you look at the periodic table, you'll see that the molar mass of sodium is 22.99 something. Now where did that 106 come from? Once again, the 106 is gotten by adding up the sum of the molar masses of all of the elements in the compound, not forgetting to multiply them by a subscript if they have one. Notice the carbon doesn't have a subscript. We don't write ones in chemistry. So we get a percentage for the sodium. And we can repeat the process for the oxygen and for the carbon. Down here, we had three oxygens in the formula, so that's why there's 3 times 16. That's the molar mass of oxygen. Again, on the periodic table, you would see something like 15.999. Same total molar mass, though, and rounding off, we have 45% oxygen. And finally, if you take the mass of one carbon, 12 grams, divided by the total molar mass, you get a percent composition of 11%. Now I have just one problem with this slide. Take a close look at the numbers. Theoretically, all of the percent should add up to 100. So 43 plus 11 is 54. 54 plus 45 is 99. I think there's a math there in there somewhere. But the point is that if you've done your math correctly, they should add up to 100%. Some problems are very general, and when they say percent composition, they mean to do that for each of the elements. And other problems on percent composition are much more specific. So if you now look into your notebook and find this page, it says practice with molar mass and percent composition. This worksheet is only asking for, after you calculate the molar mass of the compound, it only wants the percent composition of oxygen over here on the far right hand side. And I would say if you went to three sig figs or to the nearest tenth of a percent, that should be fine. And what you'll find is that we're going to ask you in the post vodcast assessment for this particular section, I'm going to ask you to answer some questions about some of the problems that are on this worksheet. So take a moment, go back and repeat the vodcast if you need to, and practice calculating percent composition. Now once again, chemistry builds on a strong basis, so percent composition is pretty easy, but it's opening the doorway to a much more difficult concept, and that is called empirical formula and followed by molecular formula. But both of those concepts are based upon knowing how to do percent composition, so go take a moment and practice and get good at it. We'll see you at the next podcast.